Hello, so here is the CS041 bit Jupyter notebook uh, written by Abuzer and refined by me, Avery Leiter. And I want to show you what he has prepared here. It's really great explanation of two important operators that we use in quantum. In daily life, we use the decimal number system. It's called 10 base because we have 10 digits, zero through nine. In computer science, on the other hand, the most widely used system is binary, which has only two digits, zero and one. You can think of these as on or off, or in this case, we could think of them as heads or tails. This bit or binary digit is the basic use of unit of information used in computer science. It is also the smallest useful memory unit, which has two states named zero and one. You might think of zero as being tails and one being heads, or zero being off and one being on. At any moment, a bit can be in either state zero or state one. There are four operators that can be defined on a single bit. An operator, depending on the current state of the bit, updates the state of the bit, and the result might be the same state. There are four different operators that we can apply to a single bit. The identity operator, which is signified by the big I. If we start out with a zero as our bit value, and we apply the identity operator to it, we end up with zero. And the same, in the same way, if we apply the identity operator to a one value, we end up with one because the identity operator does not change the value of the bit. Whereas in negation, it flips the value of the bit. It's called a not. So in the, we apply the negation operator, which is called not to a zero value and we end up with a one and a not one will end up with a zero. There are two other operators that we can use. One is called constant zero, which means no matter what we started with as input, we will end up with a value zero. So here we have zero on the value of a zero bit equals zero and constant zero on a one bit ends up also with a zero. We, you could imagine that it is uh, taking a coin, flipping it, throwing it high in the air, and when it comes down, it always comes up tails. No matter what, it always the result is always tails. So in this case, no matter what the input is, if it was a zero or a one, the answer is a zero. The constant one operator is the opposite of the constant zero operator. When you apply one to it, it as the constant operator one, no matter what the input, zero or one, the result is always one. So negation is the case of not is zero equals one, not one equals zero. First operator is called identity because it does not change the value, the content, the identity of the bit. Second operator is called not because it flips or negates the value of the bit. And also you could think of the zeros and ones as true or false. And you could think of the negation of false being true, the negation of true being false. So here I'd like to show you these table representations. They're called Schumer tables by the one of the people that designed them. You have the initial states is here in this along the first row, and then along the first column are the final states. And then this little arrow shows you the direction of the decision. We can represent the transitions of each operator by a table. In the case of the identity matrix, identity operator, excuse me, the initial value of zero goes to the final value of zero. Yes, that's true. So that could be a value true. In this initial value of one, can it become a zero? Not in the case of identity matrix. It's got to end up where it started. It has to end up with a, a final state of one. 
So it started with a zero and it is false that it could be a final uh, final value of zero, but it is true that it can go to the value of one. So the, the header, the first row represents the initial values and the first column represents the final values. And we can also define these transitions numerically. We use one if it's true that there's a transition between the two states, and we use zero if there is invalid. It is not possible to, to go between those two states. So back to the identity matrix. Is it, po is it possible to go from zero to zero in value? Yes, absolutely, it's true, because that retains the value of the bit. Can we go from zero to from one to zero? No, it is not. So we have a zero in that place in the matrix. Can we go from the initial value of zero to one? No. So it is a zero in that location, indicating false. Can we go from one to a one state? Yes. We started with one. We ended up in our final state with one. So that is a true. So we indicate that by putting a one. Now let's look at the other operators. In the case of the not operator, we started with a zero, and are we going to end up with a zero? False. No, because in the not operator, we flipped the bit. So if we started with a zero, we had to end up with a one for our final state. So we put a one in this location and it indicate that it is true, that we can look, that it is allowed to now become a one state. And in the case of a one state, we can go from a one to a zero state. Yes, that is true. It is allowed. Can we start with a one state and end up with a one state? Zero. No, it is a zero. False. It is not allowed. In the case of a zero operator, remember, regardless of the input, we will end up with a zero for the output because the zero operator is a constant zero. So here, we started with a zero and we always and we ended up in our final state with a zero, which is true. Final state is indicated with a one means true. And if we started with initial state one, we ended up with a final state of zero indicated with a one true. But can we end start with either a zero or a one and end up with a one? No, false in both cases. That's the, what is going on with the zero operator. With the one operator, it says one here, but the uh, Schumer table is down here. With the one operator, it's the reverse of the zero um, operator, where the initial state, if it was a zero or a one, can only be f true if it ends up with a one. So we have a one here or a one there. But a zero, which means not allowed, not true, false. In the case of can we go from a zero to a zero or a one to a zero? No, because in the case of the one operator, we always end up with a final result, a final state of one. Remember that in a Schumer table, table we have the initial states along the first row, and then we have the final states along the first column, and we go down the initial states and we go to the left-hand side to find what the final states are to see if we're going to indicate true or false. Now let's talk about what this all this whole notebook is about, reversibility and irreversibility. After applying the identity or not operator, we can easily determine the initial value by checking the final value. In the case of the identity operator, we simply say the same value. In the case of the not operator, we simply say the other value because it has flipped the value. However, we cannot know the initial value by checking the final value after applying the zero or the one operator. Based on this observation, we can classify the operators into two types, reversible and irreversible. If we can recover the initial values from the final values, then the operator is called reversible, like identity and not operators. If we cannot know the initial values from the final values, then the operator is called irreversible, like zero and one operators. This classification is important as the quantum evolution operators are reversible as long as the system is closed. 
The identity and not operators are two fundamental quantum operators. They are reversible and they are fundamental to quantum computing.